Hi, I'm Lenora. I'm a full-time realtor covering Central Virginia. I'm also a black belt and sensei teaching karate at a women's college called Sweetbriar. It's great to meet you, but enough about me. You're here because you want to buy a house and either you're not sure where to start or you're back in this fight and finding this a very different marketplace than last time around. Not to worry, I'll coach you through it. First, a note on pricing. In this market, most homes are going for well over asking price. The current trend for sellers is to price low rather than high. They price low to attract multiple bids and try to get a bid war going. And it's very effective. As a buyer, you have to keep that in mind as you window shop and try to get a feel for what you can afford. Ask your realtor about the current average gap between asking and selling price in your area so you'll know how much under your budget you need to cap your search. You may need to look five to 10,000 under what you can afford. In some markets, it's 25 to 50. In others, it's 100,000. So working with a local expert is really important. They may feel overpriced compared to last time you bought, but compared to current market value, they are typically underpriced unless it's a for sale by owner. So not getting good advice from a realtor or not taking the advice of the very expert they hired. If you're thinking about going from renting to owning, it's difficult, but it's worth it. Because when you're paying rent, you're giving your money away each month. When you're buying a mortgage, when you sell, that money comes back to you. Your mortgage is gradually paid down each month. Home prices go up. And when you sell, the remaining mortgage gets paid off. And the difference comes back to you as the seller. You can put that towards a larger down payment on a bigger house. Lather, rinse, and repeat every 10 years or so until you're ready to downsize and could, can put 100% of the excess towards your retirement. If you're thinking you can't afford a mortgage, consider this. Your rent is probably already paying your landlord's mortgage. You are buying a house just for somebody else. The problem is that you're buying a bigger house than you can afford. The one you're renting was purchased years ago when homes were a little cheaper and likely your landlord had a sizable down payment. So the loan amount wasn't the full purchase price. So I'm afraid the home that's spoiling you for a house you can't afford is the one you're already living in. That's why the most difficult part of going from renting to buying is that you'll probably have to downsize while at the same time your expenses are going up. It's frustrating, but remember, it's only temporary. In a few years, you can sell and use the proceeds for a bigger home or take out a home equity loan to add on. Whether you're downsizing as a first time home buyer or a last time home buyer, you may find yourself trying to fit the new house around your current furniture, but that's like a game of Tetris you can't win with so little inventory. A new couch is cheaper than a new house and a lot simpler too. You may also find yourself trying to find creative ways around the pricing issue like rent to own, foreclosure or auction, but in today's market, those rarely work out. Auctions often force you to buy without even looking inside, never mind inspection, and usually require cash. Few sellers will go for rent to own because as a landlord, you're responsible for the 3 a.m. phone calls when the toilet backs up and chasing down late rent payments. Why would sellers risk it when they could sell and be done in 30 days? And foreclosures don't work the way they used to dec decades ago because banks figured out they don't have to settle for what's owed on the mortgage. They can hold out for market value, make a sizable profit, and not have to worry about it sitting on the market for months in this market so they would have to keep paying the property tax. They can also leave evicting the former occupants for the new home buyers, you. I'm afraid the one way around downsizing is to wait. 
forego the first time home buyer benefits and tighten the budget and save for a bigger down payment until you're in the price range where you're finding homes you actually want. But that is going to mean months of giving your money away. In the meantime, home prices and rates are likely to keep going up. I know it's frustrating, but those are the choices. You have to be honest with yourself or you'll waste a lot of time and energy. As always, feel free to reach out with any questions, message or email me. Again, my company has nearly 100,000 realtors nationwide and we're number one in the country for realtor training. So even if you're not looking in Virginia, let me know where you are looking and I'd be happy to connect you with an expert in your area.